In this series, we will analyse teams, identify problem areas and suggest solutions in the form of incoming players. We won't follow gossip, rumours or conjecture, we don't have inside information and we're not considering the brand value of players, purely their on-field performance and their suitability for the team in question. Today's team is Inter. Welcome to Sensible Transfers. Inter have, of course, appointed Antonio Conte as their head coach for the forthcoming season. While Conte is a more tactically flexible coach than some might think, using an attacking 4-4-2 while at Bari, for example, he is most well known for his 3-4-3 or 3-5-2 systems. The 3-4-3, deployed with great effect at Chelsea, sees two inverted wingers playing either side of a central striker. Shuttling midfielders assist in the creation of wide overloads, while also locking down the centre of the pitch. And a libero-style defender plays between two more orthodox centre-backs, who must also themselves be able to step out to help secure the centre of the pitch defensively. The 3-5-2 tends to see a more orthodox striking pair, although one may be more of a deeper dropping creative player, while one of the midfield three has the responsibility of pushing up and assisting with the creation of chances. Central to both formations are high pressing, energetic movement with and without the ball, attacks generated in wide areas through passing triangles and diamonds, and a ball playing centre back who can transition from defence to attack by carrying the ball or passing long. Inter's squad is actually fairly well suited to Conte's style of play already, and the signing of Diego Godin adds strength and experience to the back line. But we've found areas that will need to be improved if the team are to challenge Conte's former side Juventus for the Scudetto this season. Conte tends to like to have balance in the wide positions, so he's not afraid to have one wing back more attacking than the other. At Chelsea, for example, Marcos Alonso, a very serviceable left fullback, played on that flank, while Victor Moses, a converted right winger, filled the other slot extremely capably. With this in mind, it's actually entirely plausible that Conte uses the hard-working and physical Ivan Perisic as his left wide player, with a more defensively minded player on the right. And, should Perisic play as an inside forward in the 3-4-3 or even a second striker, then the Brazilian Dalbert or even young Italian fullback Federico De Marco could step in as a more defensive option. We do think it's worth securing at least one option on the left though. Gislon Conan of Roms, for example, an extremely dynamic, aggressive fullback who could happily occupy a station slightly further up the pitch. He's recovering from a back injury but appears to be almost back to full fitness. And he's exactly the sort of energetic attack-minded defender who can tie up a whole flank. Before his injury, Conan made 15.9 forward passes per 90 at 75%, 1.47 deep completed passes or crosses per 90, and 0.43 key passes per 90. He carries the ball well too, with 3.2 progressive runs and 5.2 dribbles per 90 at 66%. And he's a combative defender who would be able to drop into Conte's back five low block and hold his own before bursting forwards with the ball. His return from injury is of course a question mark, but he would be a relatively inexpensive option and is attracting interest from other top five sides in Europe. The right hand side additionally needs an option if Inter are to mount a challenge. Shime Veselko's loan ended without Inter exercising the option to buy because of his injury. Danilo D'Ambrosio is a solid professional but cannot be seen as more than a backup. And Valentino Lazaro is hugely promising but pretty attack-minded and could pose issues for Inter defensively. But whether or not the team wants to splash much more on the right wing back spot after spending around 20 million euro on Lazaro it is another issue. William, the Brazilian at Wolfsburg, is a very complete defender who plays right back but could function higher up the pitch. Last season, he made 7.9 interceptions per 90, 0.5 tackles, and won 39% of his 9.2 defensive duels. He also contributes in attack with 3 assists, 4.2 crosses per 90 at 36% accuracy, 1.4 progressive runs, and 2.6 deep completed crosses or passes per 90. He's one of Europe's more complete right-backs, but that could push his price higher than Inter are willing to go. The cheaper option, and our choice, is Sean Kleiber of FC Utrecht. He's certainly a more defensive option, which does give good balance, winning 47% of his 8.4 defensive duels per 90 and making 4.9 interceptions. He's the second best of right-backs in the Eredivisie for progressive passes too, and contributed 5 assists, showing that he can get forwards and add to the attack. 
he achieved 4.3 crosses per 90 at 33% accuracy and 2.6 deep completed crosses or passes per 90. Valued at around 3 million euros, he looks to be an excellent dependable option at right wing back, ready for a move away from Utrecht, and was Feyenoord a rumour to be interested, a move away from a rival to a league abroad would suit his selling club better, and he would provide a strong alternative to Lazaro should Conte need a more defensive option who can still contribute to the attack. Now this may come as a surprise, given that Samir Handanovic is club captain and is still rated among the best four or five keepers in Serie A. This suggestion is less about now than about next season. Uli Kefariñas of Millenarios FC is currently Venezuela's first choice goalkeeper and one of the top prospects in the world. His height, 5 foot 11, is short for a top level goalkeeper, but that's not put off various suitors. This interest, though, could push up his price, and while he's excelled at international level, the Colombian top flight where he plays is quite a drop in quality. Nonetheless, his 17 goals conceded from an XG against of 26.4, with a 79.3% save rate is hugely impressive, and any side that picks him up will very likely get an excellent keeper. A good Italian prospect is Cagliari's 25-year-old Alessio Cragno who conceded 54 Serie A goals from an XG against of 60.5, while saving 74.4% of shots against. His long passing is good as well, making 8.5 per 90 at 77% accuracy, but his valuation is around 20 million euros, and it's likely as an Italian keeper being bought by another Serie A club, this would push the valuation higher. Our choice, though, is Krasnodar's Matvey Safanov. The 6 foot 4 20 year old Russian is one of the best prospects in European goalkeeping. In 14 Russian Premier League games, he conceded 8 goals from an XG against of 14.4, with a save percentage of 85.7%. He needs to be more dominant coming for crosses, but his distribution is sensible. He's quick off his line, and his reflexes are excellent. Valued at 6 million euros, he will certainly cost more, but any team buying him will have a goalkeeper who will quite possibly be one of the world's best in the next decade. Inter have been heavily linked with Romelu Lukaku, and he wouldn't be the worst transfer. Lukaku's link-up play is far from a weakness, and he scored 0.46 non-penalty goals per 90 in the Premier League last season, with 12 goals overall. His 2.2 shots per 90 overall isn't a significant volume comparatively though, especially given that he manages 4 touches in the box per 90. For a mooted fee of 70 million euros or more, we feel that Inter could do better. A very wild card choice is Fiorentina's Dusan Vlaovic, signed from Partizan Belgrade in 2018 when he turned 18. Vlaovic, unusually for these videos, hasn't played much top-level football this season, managing only 207 minutes. In that, though, he managed 0.51 xG per 90, the joint second of any striker aged 21 or younger in Serie A. He's a big, physical striker, and he has the kind of edge that Conte appreciates in his front men. Our concerns stem from a small sample size of top-flight football outside Serbia and whether Fiorentina would want to hold on to him, but we reckon that Vlaovic has a big future, whether at Fiorentina or somewhere else. Our clear choice, though, is Spell's 24-year-old striker Andrea Patania. He's scored 0.28 non-penalty goals per 90 from an XG of 0.42 per 90 for 16 goals in total. Four of his goals were headed, and he also scored six penalties. He managed 2.47 shots per 90 with an accuracy of 48% and 3.3 touches in the box per 90. What's most impressive though is his link-up play. He can drop off and hold up the ball well, using his strength and 6 foot 2 frame before playing it out wide to the overlapping wingbacks. He's also strong in the air, which allows for runs beyond him. It was slightly baffling when Atalanta, normally superb judges of player potential, sold him to Spal. He's now ready to step up a level, and Inter could make him their main striker. Before Inter started to move in this window, central midfield also looked like a problem area. However, the signings, albeit on loan, of highly talented young Italian midfielders Nicola Barella and Stefano Sensi go a long way to alleviating that concern. It would also be recruiting another centre-back, ideally a young prospect. Miranda and Ranocchia are good, solid backups, but playing three centre-backs requires depth. 
and this may be an additional area we're in to look to strengthen with an eye to the future. But this is what our team would look like. Players who fit the sort of system that Conte will want to use, covering outgoing players like Icardi, who can be sold for profit and to improve squad harmony, while also upgrading the side. These are sensible transfers. Hello, and thank you for watching today's video. I'm Joe. And I'm Alex. Uh, and every Tuesday we bring out a podcast. And at the moment we are talking about the same sort of thing as you've just seen in the video. So sensible transfers in which I'll suggest a list of names to Joe for good people to buy for clubs. If you would like to listen to the podcast, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google, or pretty much anywhere that you download your podcasts for. If you would like to watch us, you can search for TIFO Podcast on YouTube, where we film the full episodes and they go up every week. Uh, search for the TIFO Football Podcast and we'll be with you every Tuesday. Thank you again for watching. Thank you.